This is part two of our series of videos on section 1.1. In this one, we discuss connectives, propositional forms, and truth tables. So what are connectives? Well, it refers to these three symbols here, and they're used to create new propositions from existing ones. So let's imagine that the letters P and Q denote propositions. Then we, we can create this new proposition. It's called the negation of P, and it has exactly the opposite truth value of P. So the negation of P is true if P happens to be false, and the negation of P is false if P happens to be true. Now this proposition is known as the conjunction of P and Q, and it's true precisely when both P and Q are true. Otherwise it is false. Now there are four possible states of true or false that both P and Q can be in. The conjunction is false in three out of four of those possible states, and so it is more often um, false than true. This proposition is referred to as the disjunction of P and Q, and it is true when either P or Q is true. So in three out of four of the possible states of true or false for P and Q, the disjunction is true. So disjunctions are more often true than false. This can be seen more clearly by looking at the so-called truth tables for each of these three propositions. The term propositional form uh, refers to an expression involving finitely many letters and connectives. The letters represent propositions. We say that the propositional form is well-formed if it becomes a proposition once one's truth values are assigned to the letters that make it up. For example, uh, the negation of P, the conjunction of P and Q, and the disjunction of P and Q are examples of well-formed propositional forms. For each well-formed propositional form, we can construct its truth table, uh, which gives the values of the prop propositional form as a function of the truth values of the letters in it. For example, here I've indicated what are the truth tables of the negation of P, the conjunction of P and Q, and the disjunction of P and Q. So you can see that the truth value of the negation of P is exactly opposite to the truth value of P. For the conjunction of P and Q, you can see that the only time that it's ever true, it's on that first line, is when both P and Q are true, and if at least one of them is not true, then the conjunction is, of P and Q is considered to be false. On the other hand, you can see that the disjunction of P and Q is true most of the time. It's true if exactly one, if at least one of P or Q is true. So that happens on the first three lines. The only time it's false is when both P and Q are false. We say that two propositional forms are equivalent if they have exactly the same truth values, even though they might look quite different from each other. The de Morgan laws give two important examples of equivalent propositional forms. This is the truth table of the negation of the disjunction of P and Q. And this is the truth table of the conjunction of the negation of P and Q. So in order to get the first table, we begin by getting the entries for the disjunction of P and Q. Um, so here it is. And then we just negate those. So these have exactly the opposite truth values.
to get the um, truth table for the conjunction of the negations of P and Q, we first get the table for the negations of P and Q, and then we take the conjunction of those two. So notice that the last columns of these two tables are identical. And so these last columns represent equivalent prop propositional forms, and we write this in the following way in order to indicate equivalence. So this is called De Morgan's Law. It's one of the two De Morgan's Laws. In words, what it says is that the negation of the statement that either P or Q is true is the statement that neither P nor Q is true. From an algebraic point of view, it tells you how to distribute a negation across a disjunction. It tells you that you should negate each of the individual propositions and you should change the uh, disjunction into a conjunction. The second de Morgan's Law is similar to this one and it's given as follows. In words it says that the negation of the statement that both P and Q are true is the statement that at least one of P or Q is not true. The proof of it is obtained in a similar way to the way we got uh, this, this formula. We would put the, the conjunction of P and Q here instead of the disjunction and we would um, follow through on the calculation of the last column. And for the right hand side we would do the disjunction here rather than the conjunction.